Welcome to the Donald Brennan School of Information and Computer Sciences third annual ICS Industry Showcase event. My name is Jason King, Senior Associate Director of Corporate Relations for the school. I would now like to introduce the Dean for the Donald Brennan School of Information and Computer Sciences, the esteemed D. Marios Papa FMU. D. Marios, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jason. Let me, let me share my screen. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Marius Papa FMU. I'm the Dean for the Donald Brent School of Information and Computer Sciences, and I want to welcome you all to the third ICS uh, Industry Showcase. This is an event we have been doing for three years now. Uh, the first year was in person. Uh, the past uh, last year and this year is, is online. Uh, I'm really excited to have uh, this opportunity to connect uh, with our students and with uh, our industry partners who, who come to campus to recruit our students. So I just want to spend the next five to 10 minutes to, 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 to give an overview of the school, give you know, the 10 minute overview of what's happening in, in ICS um, and, and, and more of a bird's eye view of, of, of the space we're in. And uh, then I will you know, turn it over to my colleagues for, for the rest of the morning program. Uh, so here's a slide that I've been using for those of you who have attended previous uh, introductions, uh, a slide I've been using every year and updating every year. And this is data that comes from the US Bureau of uh, Economic Analysis and basically shows the state of the digital economy uh, as far as the federal government is concerned. Uh, on the left, you see some uh, high level numbers about the percentage of US GDP that is taken by the digital economy these days. It's almost 10% of the uh, uh, gross domestic product in the US as of 2019. Uh, the average growth rate for the discipline has been 6.5% for 15 years now. Uh, as a reference, the economy has been growing by 1.8%. Uh, so almost four to five points above uh, the growth of the, of the general economy. About 7.7 .7 million jobs as of 2019 with uh, a median uh, or, or with an average compensation of $131,000. So, so the bar chart on the right hand side gives you another pictorial view of the digital economy. Uh, back in 2005, it was about 8% of the US GDP. Uh, fast forward 2019, uh, it's, uh, it's 10% and growing. So it's a, big, it's a big percentage and growing percentage. Uh, now, how does the labor market outlook uh, look? Uh, again, this is data from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And uh, you know, for the, 10, the next 10 years, the projection is that the digital economy will grow at a rate of 13%, adding about 667,000 new jobs. So you do the quick back of the envelope calculations if you include retirements, we're talking about one and a half million jobs that will be available, new and replacement, right? In this space for the next decade. So about 150,000 jobs per year. How many new degrees do we get in, in, in North America, US plus Canada every year? Uh, turns out that we get around 50,000 new graduates per year. Uh, and this is based on data that comes out annually from the Computing Research Association. So supply and demand are mismatched by almost a factor of three. And it's obviously, you know, being in the space that we are, it's, a, it's, it's obviously a, a very, very hot space. Not just now, it's been like this for more than a decade. So in our school, the School of Information and Computer Sciences, we, we try to do our part to, to close the gap between supply and demand. Uh, we're one of the largest uh, schools of computing uh, in the nation. Uh, last uh, June, we conferred uh, 1,250 degrees, bachelors, masters, and PhD together, which amounts to around 2% of the annual production of new degrees in, in North America. So this is a big place with a lot of, of students, a lot of bright students, I should ask, I should add, uh, because I, I think we're one of the best places that's out there. Here's again some data to corroborate the statement. Uh, fall 2021 selectivity, our undergraduate programs, uh, less than one in five students was admitted. At the master's level one, less than one in nine was admitted at the doctoral level, less than one in seven. So 
this is a highly selective program that we're running in the school. If you look at the US News and World Report undergraduate rankings, and we all know that all these rankings are always taken with a grain of salt, uh, our computer science program is ranked among the top 12 uh, in, in, uh, when all public programs are considered. And you will ask who was so special about public programs. These are the programs in computer science that tend to be large, uh, graduating around four, maybe 500 students per year. And it's really a more appropriate set uh, you know, of, of peer group, uh, of a peer group that, 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 that we can compare our, our CS degree with. Um, CS program has been the largest program in the US for, for a couple of years now according to ASW. Uh, in the software engineering sub area, uh, software engineering ranks seventh uh, in the nation among all programs in the US. So the school is a candy, it's a candy store. Uh, we have uh, seven undergraduate degrees. Uh, we have um, five professional master's programs that we offer. You can see all the, the listings. Uh, we have five masters of science programs and another five PhD programs in all these areas. Uh, you will be hard pressed to look for uh, an area in the broader computing space and not find it in our school. Undergraduate enrollments have been growing steadily, but for the past couple of years, they've been hovering around 3,500. We have a very diverse group of students, undergraduate students, approximately one in three is first generation. One in four is female above, above the national average. One in seven, one in six is, is of a background that's traditionally underrepresented in computing. The graduate enrollments have been growing steadily as well, uh, both at the PhD and the master's level. We have approximately 800 graduate students in our school as of fall of 2021. Faculty growth is another, uh, is another characteristic of the school for the past few years. Uh, we are north of 100 tenure track faculty at this point, and we plan to continue hiring. We, are, we aspire to hit around 110, 115 uh, faculty uh, in the next few years. There will be headwind, not from the pandemic, there will be headwind from retirement. So there's, there is a lot of replenishing that's been happening in ICS over the past few years, and we, we uh, expect that to continue. Uh, these are all the faculty we've hired in the past uh, four, four and a half years. Uh, some of these faculty will be presenting later and will give you just a glimpse of all the exciting things that we're doing uh, in our school across the board, right? From statistics and, 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 and the sort of mathematical approach to, to big data analytics, all the way through computing, all the way to the impact of what we do around computing and data to our society. So the entire spectrum is basically represented in the school you, you, you hear a sampling of all the things that we do later on on the panel. We're strong in all these research areas. I'll go down the list uh, without overwhelming you. Hopefully AI, machine learning and data science historically has been an area of strength for the school. We've been piling up on this strength. Uh, databases systems, cloud computing, cybersecurity, software engineering, moving to the right-hand side, embedded systems, network systems, graphics and visualization, human computer interaction, digital media and learning. You can read about the number of faculty that we have in all these areas and, and, and all the graduate students who work in those areas. If you want me to throw an alphabet soup at, a soup at you, this is a way to visualize what's happening around ICS on this campus. So ICS is in the middle of the picture and all these other circles around ICS are other academic units, other schools on this campus. And the shaded blue ovals are the various centers in which research in our schools, in our school takes place. So you can see the overlap of these ovals with the other units. Um, I'm not gonna take you through this entire alphabet soup. All I want to say is that there is a ton of exciting research going on. And, uh, and, and, and a lot of that research doesn't just stay as a publication or as a technology sort of transfer opportunity. A lot of that research uh, percolates to what we do with our students in the classroom. So it happens by 
embedding some of this research into our classes or by engaging our students through research opportunities during the academic year or through the summer. So there are a lot of learning happening indirectly through the research engagement of our students. A lot of this know-how um, by osmosis uh, moves into uh, our students through the various student organizations. There's more than a dozen student organizations that ICS supports and are, and are basically led by our students and driven by our students. And these organizations have uh, themes or they, 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 they tend to attract students that have common interests. So a lot of the learning happens uh, in those organizations and a lot of the initiatives that our students take happens through the student organizations. And of course, a lot that our students do around entrepreneurship. So we have students who not only learn the basics around computing, but they're also independent uh, 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 and analytical thinkers, creative and analytical thinkers. I want to say a big thank you to all our partners for helping us support this kind of an ecosystem, right? Uh, I don't think we could do what we do to the extent that we do it without all these uh, partners around us who support a myriad of aspects in, 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 our, in our school, whether that's our student organizations, whether these are capstone programs at the senior level or, 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 or at the graduate level, or whether that's uh, support of research, or whether it's support of our numerous uh, research centers. So a big thank you. I know many of you are here on the call today and later talking to our students. Uh, we really appreciate all the things that you do uh, for our students, really. Uh, let me take you through the rest of the program. I don't want to take too much time. Uh, the next few minutes, uh, we'll have two short video introductions of our two new department chairs in the school. We have a, new department chair in computer science, Professor Tony Givargis, and a new department chair in informatics, Professor Melissa Masmanian. So we'll play short intros of these, uh, for, from these two new chairs, and then we'll move over to the panel. I will introduce the moderator of the panel, Professor Michael Carey, and then Professor Carey will take it from there. So uh, I believe this is the time I stop sharing my screen and, uh, you should start seeing the videos for Professors Givargis and Masmeni.